Hey everybody, this is your host, Jennifer Perkins, and welcome to the Creative Queso Podcast. Each episode, I discuss the business of being creative and the creativity behind running a business. Sometimes, I talk with Project Runway All-Stars winners about RuPaul's Drag Race and Queso in a Jar from the local bodega. Today is one of those days with my guest, Mondo Guerra. Mondo is the host of a brand spanking new series called Runway Remake on the digital subscription platform Blueprint. The show is an online companion to the Project Runway you know and love. Each week, there is a new episode featuring a different maker from Blueprint putting their own spin on that week's Project Runway theme. Think embroidered fashionistas and illustrated supermodels. Runway Remake is a wonderful, crafty, and complimentary addition to all things Project Runway, and Mondo Guerra is the perfect host. Mondo was a runner-up on Season 8 of Project Runway and then came back and won Project Runway All-Stars. Since the show, he has continued to stay active as an advocate for HIV awareness, been busy creating over-the-top amazing dresses fit for a queen, and judging the occasional quilting bee. What exactly is a face kini? How do you massage the rules? And when is creativity your best friend? All this and more on today's episode of the Creative Queso Podcast with Jennifer Perkins. Let's dip a chip in that queso with Mondo, shall we? All right, Mondo. I am so excited that you are here to chat with me today. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm in uh, Brooklyn, like... New York. Oh, Brooklyn. Exciting. Yes. I'm, in, I'm in Austin. Is it warm there yet? Uh, no, it's cloudy, overcast, but it's weird. It's weird, uh, it's weird weather here. It's, I think it's about 65. I haven't actually been out this morning, um, but I think it's about 65, but it's humid and cloudy. Well, you know, at least it's not snowing or raining. Yeah, that's true. I know my sister you know, texted me. You... My sister oh, texted me. She texted me last night. She said it's snowing here in Denver again. So Ugh. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not there. Right. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I was. I was gonna say that. Like every time I do an interview with somebody, you know, I kind of cyber stalk them and read all their interviews mm. and and do all their stuff. But clearly, Blueprint runs one of those ads. You know, where like if you go to their site, like it pops up again. So like uh-huh. all morning, every website I've gone to, there's been your face. Oh, geez. Yeah, I know. Those, those, so you're trying to stalk me, but Blueprint was stalking you. Exactly. That's what, that's what was going on. Exactly. I, Everywhere I, I would go, even if I totally wasn't looking into you, I was like, uh-huh. there's Mondo on my screen again. Oh, geez. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. You've got a cute face. I'll let it slide. <laughs> All right, so let's start with a with a brief history of Mondo. You were a runner up on Project Runway season eight. Then you came and you brought the heat and the polka dots and Project Runway All Stars and won. So, how do you think the Project Runway franchise has changed you for better or for worse? Like, can you still go to Target without getting mobbed? Oh yeah, totally. Especially even the, even in the craft aisle. Um, oh, no, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think it's changed me in a very positive way. Going into the show, I, I feel like I was very isolated. You know, I didn't go to school for fashion design, so I didn't have the experience of really working with a lot of other creative people that were interested in the same, you know, uh, creative outlet that I was in. Um, so going on Project Runway and meeting 15 other designers that were really, you know, excited and passionate about their work, was a good learning lesson for me. You know, I was very intimidated when I first worked with Tim Gunn because, again, I never had that kind of mentorship. And so that was very exciting, but also very, very scary. Throughout the show, I think that my confidence built um, challenge by challenge, just really engaging uh, in each challenge uh, as it's presented as a new challenge. Um, And I didn't really focus on going as far as I did, I really focused on it week by week and really enjoying the company of these other creative people. And I think that's what really pushed me forward is, you know, for the first time in my life, I really felt 
that I was in a safe place where I could express myself and be validated for all the other stuff. So this season, there's been a bit of a Project Runway shakeup. Bringing the show back to Bravo, no more Tim and Heidi, and of course your new digital companion series, Runway Remake for Blueprint, which we're going to deep dive into. Okay. But tell me your thoughts and feelings about the the Bravo, the Runway Project Runway action. Well, well you know, I think that it's. I think it's. I think it's nice. I think like any creative um, environment also includes. Um, I guess, uh, it evolves, you know, I feel mm. like the show is evolving. I mean, it's been on air for what, 16, 16 seasons now, this is season 17. And, you know, I feel like it's growing up a little bit. I think that it's gotten a nice little, uh, fresh, uh, facelift. And I feel that it has a new look. I feel like it's a little bit modern, a little bit more edgy, but the thing that, okay. So, you know, being a competitor on the show, what I've noticed the most from having that experience, what's new is a, they win a lot more money. Okay. Uh, two, they get a bigger budget to buy their materials all the time. And three, I feel like they get a lot more time to execute the challenges. I, I feel like every time I watch it, they always are like, Oh, this is a two day challenge. I think I've seen a couple episodes that are like a one day challenge in my day. And I can say that now. Back in my day on Project Runway, <laughs> we had one-day challenges back-to-back. -back, and sometimes we would have a two-day challenge. And even on those two-day challenges, we'd only get, at the most, $250 for a material budget. That's my only complaint. I love the new Project uh, Runway Bravo. So, you know, we're good. I got gotcha. you, but you're like that's that's a little that's a little different. That's a little unfair. If I had that money in that time, it's a little it's a little it's a little different. I won't say that it's unfair. I'll just I just need something to complain about. You know, we all <laughs> do. <laughs> so I know in the past you've sat on panels and helped you know select contestants. Mm -hmm. Did you help for this season as well? Uh, no, I and I didn't help for season seventeen. So you know. I am enjoying watching season 17 as a peer fan of the show. You know, I'm watching it in real time, just like everybody else. And I, yes, I do read the blogs. I never comment on the blogs because I don't feel like that's a, I feel like it's a conflict of interest and people don't want to see what I have to say about, you know, him and her and them and everybody else about the show. <laughs> so I just kind of like, I read it. I sip my tea and that's about it. <laughs> you don't spill the tea. You just sip No, I it. just sip the tea and I don't spill it. I like it. You're a good sport. Thank you. So, you know, um, once upon a time, I did TV as well for DIY Network and HGTV. And even though it was like a craft show and, you know, there was like craft supplies all around me all the time. Sometimes when you're working within the parameters of a TV show or with a theme or even in like a group situation with lots of people and you're not used to it, it can, for me, it was still a little stifling sometimes. Did you ever feel that way when you were on Project Runway? Like you're surrounded by fabric yet you're not really like inspired in what you would sew. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course. I think that comes, you know, as a creative person, you always have, I'm not going to say creative blocks because I don't feel for me, for my experience, I, I think I've experienced the idea of a creative block, but when I really look back at it and think about that moment, I was just being lazy. Okay. That's the thing about it. I think on the show, you don't have time to be lazy. Either you sink or swim, you know, and I chose to swim all the time. Yes. You know, I mean, that, there's a reason why they call them challenges because you mm -hmm. really have to get through it. I mean, you have 10 hours to create a garment and then present it in front of the you know the judges and it's and I think the most stifling thing is intimidation and fear of being in front of those judges you know I think the fun part of the whole process is actually being there with all the other designers and I mean it's it's fun I felt like it was kind of like um summer camp for the first time mm -hmm. you know I never experienced summer camp growing up so that was my first experience out for a summer with a bunch of new people and I and I loved it. 
Oh, good. Yeah. No, it seemed like everybody has fun. I just know, like I was saying, for me, sometimes if the network is there and it's like, and you need to make this, this, and this, and you're like, but today I feel like oh, making this. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. So, no, you know, the producers and the network never really told us what to make. They presented mm-hmm. the challenge. And I think, you know, for us as designers, we really took the inspiration and you said the parameters of the challenge. But as creative people, again, it's up to us to not break the rules, you know, because we'll be read for that in front of the judges. Um, But massage the rules, you know, Mm -hmm. and get away with as much as we can with still, you know, um, sharing our point of view and voice as a creative person. So um, did Project Runway come to you to host your new Runway remake, or did that have anything to do with the Denver blueprint? That is crazy. That was, you know, that was such a crazy, crazy uh, proposal for me because, you know, I think we, so yes, blueprint, I shot in Denver, Blueprint is in Denver. I grew up in Denver, but I live in Brooklyn. So like the second week of January, a representative from Blueprint called me and said, hey, Mondo, we're developing a new show. We're interested in talking to you about possibly hosting it. Um, and I was like, okay, can you tell me what the name of the show is? No, we can't really tell you what the show is. Can you tell me what it's about? Uh, I don't, we can, it's about creativity You know, I was like, okay, is there anything else you can tell me about the show? They said, no, not really. And they wanted to set up another call. And so we set up another call. The next call, it was a lot of the same thing. I was like, so what is it called? Um, Can you tell me anything else about the show? Blah, blah, blah. They're like, well, no, not really. And they said, but we're actually looking at you to be the host. And you would, um, you know, you would uh, introduce each of the segments and blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, well, and she said, "There, it's about a show. It's about a show that you are very familiar with." And I said, "Oh, so like Project Runway?" They're like, "Oh no, I don't. We can't really say yet." I was like, "So can I assume that it's Project Runway?" They're like, "You can assume anything you want." I said, "Okay." <laughs> and so the, basically, I signed on without really knowing what what the show was really about, you know. And not until I signed the contract were they able to tell me a lot more details. You know, I didn't ask questions why that was the case, but I feel like, you know, it Project Runway moving to a new network, they really wanted to keep as much information contained as possible to make Mm -hmm. it make a really big splash with all the content and especially the show and the contestants when they came out in real time for everybody else to see. You know what I mean? So I was I was excited about it. So then I signed on, uh, I guess, like maybe two weeks later I was in Denver top secret uh at the blueprint studios and we filmed all of our uh segments in one day it was like three days of work we did a bunch of um media like photographs and things like that then we did uh the filming and then we did an episode that I did that uh involves somebody very special and dear to my heart um uh my mother was actually a guest on the show that I produced. And so that, well, when I say produced the show that I was the creative person, uh, making, making the, the project for one of the, mm-hmm. uh, runway remake episodes. Did that make sense? Has that one aired yet? Yeah. No, no. Has it aired yet? I haven't seen that. No, I'm that is that. coming up. So if you're not watching runway remake, you need to hop onto my blueprint.com and check it out and tell us what you think. Yeah, check. No E. Drop the E. Blueprint without an E. Yes, true. <laughs> it's like I used to have a company called Naughty Secretary uh-huh. Club, and I'd have to tell everybody, like, don't forget the club. <laughs> and I feel like, you know, or it's going to be a whole different kind of website. Yeah. So I feel like that with Blueprint, like I always have to tell people. You like, know, I've never actually, no that's really good that you pointed that out because I have never actually pointed that out. And now those are things that I always look at. I am going to start saying that Blueprint myblueprint.com without an E. Exactly. Drop the E. So you filmed all in one day. I envisioned there was like a a mother load of NDAs that were involved, but Uh oh yeah. So you filmed everything all in one day. So did you actually meet any of the runway remake 
contestants, any of those people? So they're not contestants. They are creative. Well, I use that term loosely. Right, okay. okay. So yeah, no, I never, I never met any of the, um, of the creative people uh, executing each challenge on Blueprint um, directly. Uh, I knew about each episode and I knew what they were creating and I introduced it and then I kind of wrapped it up. But, you know, I'm, I, I think it went really, really well. You know, it was very scary for me to hold, I mean, I, to hold that kind, I mean, hold Project Runway on my shoulders. You know what I mean? They could have asked anybody to do that. So, A, I was very honored, but also it was very, very scary. And when I went in there to film, I wanted to do the best I could do. And, you know, I found it to be challenging, um, in a very, very positive way. And by the end, I was really, you know, I felt like I was on top of my game and I felt like I really improved within a day. You know what I mean? It's just like any other new experience mm-hmm. that you might be scared of engaging. And, um, if you just really throw yourself in and be yourself and have fun, everything seems to work out. Yeah, no, you were adorable. You were Oh, thank guy. you. Thank you. And I'm a host snob. You were good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah, I've been watching. And then I'm starting a new online interview companion series. And Ellie Lum, who did that cool mixed media tote bag, Uh she's going to be doing like the companion interview online. If you ever need anybody else to do a companion interview online for you, I'm available. Well, okay. (laughs) I will take you up on that. So the winner of Project Runway gets their own blueprint show, which is pretty amazing. Do you have any plans to do more with Blueprint beyond the Runway remake series? I mean, I hope that I really hope that Blueprint we come back with Runway remake. And again, you know, I feel like as any creative uh, project evolves, I think there should be some evolution within runway remake you know next year we t- we talked about have not being really engaged directly with the creative people i want to go in there and ask them questions i feel like for me to go in there unscripted and ask questions is like us watching it on television and or when we see the episode all those questions that come through the comments you know those are the questions that i'll be asking and i feel like that would be really fun and i also feel like you know i think it makes it more of a collaborative effort and i think it will maybe change up you know the outcome of the design of the project that the uh, creative is creating so i think that there's a lot of room to to grow with runway remake Mm -hmm. and beyond that you know and beyond that with uh blueprint i've talked to them about you know maybe uh doing some more some more content uh for some projects that i'm passionate about liking it yeah yes 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 where I'm going to discuss, I've got a whole list. Okay, of good. <laughs> good, good, good. <laughs> Who's hire me as yes, your agent? Let me know. <laughs> um, so speaking of one of the shows that I think you should do for them, when you're not doing the runway remake, you're busy making face keenies and such for contestants on RuPaul's Drag Race, which I love. I've got a friend who's obsessed with the show, and my 10-year-old daughter, like when she saw that you had dressed Alyssa Edwards, she was like screaming. She was like, oh my God, he knows Alyssa Edwards. She was flipping out. So how did you get started down that path of dressing contestants for Drag Race? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, I know that there were like, I know there's designers that I look up to and, you know, have talked to and they were designing for, um, designing for contestants from RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm trying to think of who my very first client was, you know, you know who it was, I believe. So the first time Shay Coulee reached out to me and this wasn't even for the show. She had, she had already went through the, you know, through the, through the, um, the whole season. And I think it was just for a look to wear for her travels and her performances and whatnot. And so I did that look and I posted the look and I just said, Hey, guess who this is for? It's like RuPaul drag race royalty. And then Reddit posted it and it became this huge thing. And people were like, Oh my gosh. And they guessing, you know, in like a million comments, Reddit is really good for a lot of comments. Um, but uh, so they posted that 
And then, then Blair St. Clair reached out to me before she got on her season um, to ask me to make a couple outfits for her. And then I did her finale gown and her uh, reunion gown. And then Miss Cracker became a client. And then, she, oh gosh, and then it just all started coming in. Then at Milk, then Sasha Velour, uh, Alessa Edwards, uh, Sugar Cane is one of my newest clients. Um, who else? Uh, Laganja. You know what? Actually, Laganja was my very first client. I take that back. It wasn't Shea Coulee. It was Laganja way back when, when she felt very attacked. <laughs> Yeah, and you were like, "Let me make it all better." I was like, "Let's do this. Let's do. Let's do this." Yeah. So yeah, Laganja was my first, um, my first client. Oh, and Manila Luzon. How could I forget her? She's also one of my clients. Yeah, I was just like going through your Instagram feed. Like, did I did I did I miss anybody? Because I am going to hear it. I'm going to hear if I did. I'm sure you will. We can always put it in the show notes. Okay, good. We'll put a list and a link to each outfit. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, I mean, I'd also like to know which one, uh, like from your viewers or from your listeners, uh, from what I've done for these queens, is their favorite. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Everybody, do let us know. Let us know. Yeah, I want because I was like obsessed with the little face keeny action you just did for uh, Sh- sugar, like cane. sugar cane. Sugar cane. Yes. yes, it was very like Lee Bowery and yes. with the wind. Yes, I mean, yeah, and I I love that. I think that we had decided on a Victorian silhouette, and I was kind of left up to pick the textile. And when I saw that textile, I was like, oh, my God, Victorian, it's roses, but it's also stripes and polka dots just like me. This is mm-hmm. perfect. And I'm really glad that Sugar signed off on that, and I think that it was very, very well received. Um, I loved that outfit. Uh, the funny thing about Sugar is that she was very, very, very quiet about her participation on the show. Cause sometimes, you know, like you get some of these Queens and they're like, Oh yeah, I'm going to be on a show. I'm going to be gone this and this. And, and automatically they can't really say what it is for, but they all say, I'm going to be on the show this summer. I'm going to go film, blah, blah, blah. You automatically know God, right. It's RuPaul's drag race. So you like make the most craziest outfit because you know, they're going to um, be on the show. Oh, I forgot to say, I did leave somebody out. It was Dusty Ray Bottoms. <laughs> okay, sorry. So anyway, <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I, I'm going to fall. I won't be able to sleep. So, um, so, but Sugar Cane, she was very secretive. She told me that. She told me that oh, I just need some looks for, uh, for performance. She never said that she's going to be on the show. And then she left, right? She left to go film. And I was trying to get in touch with her through Instagram to ask for pictures of like her wearing the outfits for her shows and blah, blah, blah. She gave me this whole story. Like she was very secretive. She was not trying to, she was not trying to ruin her chances at all. She was like very top secret that, that sugar cane should be uh, a a secret agent for sure. Right. Yes. yes. CIA. She's very yes. subtle. She'd blend right in. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right? Especially with that fa- <laughs> especially with the face kini. Exactly. I love that word. That's like my new favorite word. I didn't even know that it was called a face kini. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't either until I started cyber stalking you and researching this episode. And I went <laughs> like, my gosh, I love that word. Yeah, but you know, I do love the Lee Bowery uh references. You know, a lot of the comments that I've gotten through Instagram by posting that particular outfit for that challenge there's a lot of lee bowery comments and i totally see that i totally understand that and that is definitely a fashion icon of mine you know uh, i just feel like lee really experimented with texture and shapes and just had a lot of fun with experimenting and um being different and i feel like that was i feel like you know sugar cane's presence on that runway this past week was significant because she she really was one of the ones that did something completely different, took mm-hmm. the whole challenge in a different direction. And that was, I felt like that was very awesome. Yeah, no, I loved it. And I, and I love Lee. I love that you, you channeled that look. I mean, I was that kid that every day made my mom like put my hair into little tiny braids and wear, a, <laughs> and, wear a, and wear a bowler cap to school. So yes, I could look nice. like boy George. Yes. So I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I would wear that outfit. I get it. I might stand out here at 
you know, at the PTA meeting here in the Burbs, but you should, you know, here's the thing you should push, you should take some fashion risks and go out there and do something that might shake things up. Because once you do, you'll start getting comp, you'll get a lot of stares, but half of those stares are very positive and interested stares. I'm and sure. then you'll feel I'm very sure. good about yourself. You're like, wow, I got away with that. That was very interesting. I'm going to try something. I'm going to tr- try to kick it up a notch. And then you'll just get more creative and more creative and more comfortable and push those bound, massage the rules. Massage the rules. Yes. We're back. Yes. <laughs> Full circle. <laughs> we, well, you are speaking to someone who's sitting in a closet full of vintage caftans and moo's. I'm actually looking at the dress. I wore to drag queen bingo in Palm Springs. So, so nice. I'm there. I'm there with those outfits. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Wear them out to the ear PTA meetings. Exactly. And also I'd like to say for the record that if you and blueprint work together in the future, I want like fashion fun with face canies hosted by Mondo. By Mondo. <laughs> I could That's do that. I could do that. That's a whole lot of face canies. Well, you know what I mean. But I think there should be like a a drag race version of Runway Remake. Oh, that would be awesome. That would be so awesome. I love that idea. Let's keep that on the books. I will. I've got some friends there at Blueprint, (laughs) a.k.a. Craftsy. I'm going to put it in the mirrors. (laughs) Okay, okay. (laughs) All right. So another topic that's near and dear to you is Dining Out for Life, which here in Austin is May 23rd. How did you get involved oh, it's with May that? May 23rd, okay. Yeah, here in Austin. So how did you get involved with that organization, and how can people listening get involved? So uh, my time on Project Runway, there was a challenge that was presented to us, uh, and it was known as the Print Challenge, the HP Print, uh, HP Print Challenge. That is very difficult to say. It's actually harder to say than Runway Remake. Um, right. So the HP Print, yes, that. HP Print Challenge was presented to us and we were supposed to uh, create a print that was reflective of uh, our childhood. And uh, it was a very difficult challenge for me. And through that challenge, I created a print that is now known as the positivity print. And the positivity print explained uh, that I was, that I am HIV positive. And this is something that I had kept uh, quiet about and silent about for a long, long time. Um, and so on that stage, I came out as HIV positive. And through that, uh, through that, the viewers, especially the viewers, uh, and not only the viewers, my family as well, the encouragement and the support of, you know, uh, me speaking out really encouraged me to continue the conversation about HIV AIDS. And so when Subaru approached me and asked me if I wanted to be part of this uh, this national campaign, Dining Out for Life, I said, definitely yes. You know, it's two of my favorite things. It's um, talking about and bringing awareness to uh, the HIV community and people that might not be involved with the HIV community and giving them, you know, an opportunity to participate in their community um, as advocates themselves. Um, in a different way by going out and dining out and having a good meal and having a conversation. Um, and you know, I love food. So it was like a, it was a win-win situation. I would call myself a foodie, but, um, I think I have a long way to go. <laughs> life goals, life goals, life goals. I mean, I do love to, I love to dine out. I love, love to dine out. I love to cook, but I want to get better. So if there's ever like Okay, so here's another thing. So if there's ever a cooking show that brings in like C C list celebrities that don't oh. really that don't really know how to cook, but think up. they know how to cook, sign me up. If they do like a C list celebrity episode of Nailed It, I am on there. I want to be on there. I want to compete. I want to make desserts that look awful. I'd love that. One of the girls that was on an earlier episode of the podcast is going to be on the new season of Nailed It. Oh my God. I love that. I know. I'm so excited. I'm like, yes. I love that show. And I think Nicole is such a funny host. I love her. Yeah, it is. That's the other show between that and Dancing Queen. That's the other show my child makes me watch incessantly. 
So you're a dancing queen. I so my shows are. I love uh, World of Dance. I love World of Dance. That is such a good show. The one with Jennifer Lopez. Right? Yes. Have you watched it? I haven't, but you're like oh, the fiftieth person. My to gosh, it. like it is such a good show. You need to watch it. Catch up. There's three seasons. We're at the end of the third <laughs> season. Please catch up. Uh, and then I also love The Voice. I've been watching it for, I think, I haven't watched it since the beginning, but I got hooked probably about four, five seasons ago. And I love I love The Voice. Yeah, I haven't watched that one either. Catch up. I know. I'm like, you know, when you got <laughs> little kids, like an eight and a 10 year old, I'm really like, I'm subjected to her, her show. Uh, and she was an when AGT do, gal. But when do you get your, oh, we're AGT all the time too. We love yeah. AGT. I don't know how I feel about the last winner, but you know, what else? Which one was the last winner? The um, the magician. Remember the card? Oh yeah, the card yeah, guy. Yeah. You know who I Shailen. loved? Yes, you know who I loved. I loved the girl from uh from England that was the little mini Janis mm-hmm. Joplin. Yes. When she I got out, when she got out like fifth or sixth, I was like, what? Like, yeah, I thought I she was gonna what? win it. You know what it reminded me of is my mom used to always say, like, some people, the only taste they have is in their mouth. Oh. <laughs> and that's voting. Yeah, true. I was like, y'all don't even know a good Otis Redding cover when you hear it. She was so good. She was so good. <sighs> Dang it. And you could make her outfits. Oh, my God. And I loved her style, too. She was so good. Mm-hmm. We'll be hearing from her. I feel it. Okay, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> so, you know, back to that poignant moment on Project Runway, I, I did want to ask you if you've ever dabbled anymore with fabric design after that. Like, I know Jay Carroll had, like, a line of craft fabric, but have you ever done anything with, like, spoon flower? Or uh, yeah, I, I mean, I work with spoon flower a lot it's just for, like, my own um, collections. I do a lot of original, you know, custom prints for collections, but I haven't had a gig where I design a line of fabrics which i would love to um but no i haven't i work with spoonflower all the time they're a great company easy mm-hmm. process you know they're very helpful if you have a question they'll hit you back right away you know and give you some tips you get through it they'll help you they'll hold your hand and it's a lot of fun and i am always very very happy with their product i know i love them i just did like a facebook live with those guys out in California and I, they were doing like um swimsuit material and I couldn't believe how great it looked. Yeah, it's great. It's, I mean, the print quality is really great and their uh, collection of fabrics right now have just, have grown since the beginning. I think I started working with them maybe right off the show. So maybe about seven years ago, but like, you know, they, they're, they're, they're evolving. They are evolving. Mm-hmm. I like me some spoonflower. Yeah, they're good. So bringing it back to Runway Remake. So there's two episodes left, right? I believe so. Yeah, by the time this airs, there'll be two. One of which okay. you know, with your mom. <laughs> yes. Which I can't wait to see. I do love a good mom episode. And so then, what? You're just going to kind of wait until the next season of Project Runway and see what happens. For to come to do Runway remake again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I hope that they ask me back. I think that I did a really good job. You hear me, Blueprint? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I did a really good job, and I hope that I can be back because I feel like you know it's just only going to get better. And I love being on a good team, and Blueprint was an amazing team. Um, and it was just a lot, a lot of fun. And I like being the host of a show that, I mean, it sounds weird, but like, I love being a host of a show that is all about creativity because for me Mm -hmm. growing up, creativity was the only thing from day to day for a long time, most of the time. That was my only thing. And that was my only friend if you will that I could turn to you know and something Mm -hmm. that you know and a process that I really 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 respect and continue to grow with you know it 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 might create my relationship with creativity has been amazing at times it's been very tough 
but it's just like any relationship. I love it. And I will continue to work hard to evolve. Yeah. And I'd love to see the show evolve like into what you were talking about, where you actually interact yeah. with those guests, because even though they're doing a completely different medium than what they did on Project Runway or what you do professionally, you know, just interacting with all those creative people. I mean, I'm sure you would just like love it and thrive from it. Yeah, I, I would totally play, love like, it. You'd be like, I'm going to embroider this. Yeah, right. Or, you know. <laughs> yeah. So I was actually in Austin, I think sometime in. It was during South by. I know you were. So I was here. I was there with Blueprint during South by, which was really fun because I was on this panel just talking about creativity. Um, and that was awesome. Uh, but I was there also, I think, a month before uh, for a quilting guild. And we were judging a national quilting competition and I didn't know that this was a real thing but there is this quilting competition and I was like judging quilts for nine hours three days in a row I saw a bazillion quilts um (laughs) but after that I was like learning all the terminology by the like the third day I was an expert of like quilts I was like you know what I'm going to start doing a collection quilt from all the remnants from each collection it's going to be a quilt I haven't done it yet. I haven't done it yet. Okay. So don't hold me against it. It's going to happen at some point. Or actually, you know what I could do maybe is take all those fabrics from the current collection or past collection and send it to a quilter and see their take on, hey, this is. Mm -hmm. See their interpretation of it. And I love crazy quilts, like those ones that are like. You know, there's no rhyme or reason. There's just a bunch of fabric scraps. Right. I love it. I love that. I think those crazy quilts, they are called improv. Uh, Ooh, look at you with or, that terminology. Or peace quilts. Oh. For those in the know, <laughs> I like it. Yeah, quilting is like... They're, like they are very like serious. They, they are, are very, serious. very serious. And w- when we talk about quilts... um. We think about, you know, like the quilts that, traditional quilts, okay? Mm -hmm. Uh, But now, like, there's just so many new. Yeah, you know, the, uh, I'm going to say it wrong, Quilt Con was here in Austin. I mean, my friend that loves RuPaul's Drag Race was there doing, like, craft tattoos. Oh, neat. I mean, (laughs) that's that's like a hardcore group with some awesome modern art quilts. Yes, modern, modern, very young cool people and you know it was fun for me the last day so through the entire three days throughout all the different categories as a judge there's three of us judges that they fly in and um we get to pick quilts that we want to hold on the side as our judge's choice for the for our prize Mm -hmm. and so like i was new at this you know i knew how many quilts we were going to look but i didn't really understand it the other two judges at the end of the three days for their judge's choice that they had pulled aside, I think they all had like maybe eight or 12 at the most that they had held out of like this whole group over three days. I had like 40 something and I was like, had it like, it was like, I was like, okay, it was funny because they were all in front of me. I'm like, okay, let them go, let them go, let them go, let them go, you know, like just process of elimination. And then I got to like my top six and then I had to hear the whole um, summary of their inspiration. And that's, re- that's really what, you know, uh, ended up me choosing the winner is like hearing their story and their inspiration behind the quilt. You know, I was really taking in consideration the work, the construction, the creativity, all of that stuff. But I also want to know how personal these quilts are to them. And, you know, a lot of these quilts, especially in the modern quilt world, are very, very personal pieces of art. And I love that because I can relate. Mm-hmm. No, they really are. Like, they're quilting is not an easy task. It is a labor of love. True, 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 true. Yeah, I am. I I appreciate it, but it's like sewing. Like, there's so much ironing and measuring involved. <laughs> Scares me. I'm like, I just glue stuff to stuff for a living. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, don't make me get out of room. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. All right. So I end every interview with the same question. Uh-huh. Which is, I was going to ask you where to get queso in Denver, but I guess I need to switch oh. that to where to get queso in Brooklyn. 
Oh, geez. This is a, okay. So this is a hard question. Queso in Brooklyn. I have not experienced, you're going to hate me for this. I haven't really experienced great queso here in Brooklyn. Um, cause I know where to find it other places, right? So mm-hmm. my best place to find queso is at the corner bodega in a jar marked Totitos or Old El Paso. Don't hate me. Oh, my God. And usually a lot of those cravings come at, and they're available at, 3 a.m. <laughs> coming from the city, <laughs> having recreational extracurricular activities uh and um coming home and just getting off the subway and that's what you do is you stop and get some queso from the bodega on the corner and a bag of chips since you're making those choices at three in the morning right (laughs) but i know you know better i do know better and i you know i know better because i should know better (laughs) <laughs> well, well, it's funny because you're like the third person I've interviewed now in Brooklyn, uh-huh. and the guys from the Crafty Lumberjacks are vegan, so they were sending me to get like cashew queso. <laughs> and then I interviewed Ed Roth from Stencil One, and I'll have to look up. He knew a taco truck. Okay. I'll have to look it up and send it to you. Oh, so if you want to talk about that. So I do know a taco truck. I've never had their queso, but the best taco truck is directly across from the Monster Bar in the West Village. And it's usually there every night. If you have, if you happen to be in the West Village and you know where the Monster Bar is, look for the taco truck directly across from it. It is very, 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 very good. All right. And I'm sure their queso is good. So I take it back, my answer, the best queso... <laughs> Not in Brooklyn for me, but it's in the West Village at the taco truck across from the Monster Bar. Okay, you've redeemed yourself. Thank you. A little bit from queso in a jar. (laughs) Although you can microwave the jar, and it is really handy. It's easy. I mean, I'll give it to you. It is. It's easy. It's easy. Probably not the best thing for you, but I mean. You know, whatever. No queso is. Well, so let me ask. know about healthy queso. So let me ask you what, let me ask you a question about queso. What is your favorite type of queso? I mean, like my sister makes a mean queso, like in the crock pot, and there's like cream cheese involved. Oh, yum. Okay. You know, Tex-Mex queso is different than your average queso. But here, too, I like queso with like beans in it and avocado and maybe some meat. Like I want a meal out of my queso. I want a one-stop shop in my queso. I mean... I'm a kindred spirit. I love things from my childhood. My mom used to do Velveeta and um, milk and I think Rotel in the crock pot. And that was like the yummiest thing in the world. But I also love some bowling alley, skating rink, Mm -hmm. movie theater, nachos. You know what I mean? Nothing fancy. A couple jalapenos. That's cute. Right? It is good. It is tasty. But I also love, my favorite favorite would probably be chorizo, queso. Yum. Chorizo and queso, yes. And probably, oh, did you have you ever done like cutting, like you're kind of like maybe your, uh, your uh, expired tortillas, maybe like a day expired, two days expired, whatever. And then you just cut them up into like little strips, white, like white corn flour, flour tortillas. Mm-hmm. White flour, well, of course, flour tortillas. And you just cut them up. And you deep fry them. Have you done that? Put some salt on them. I have some in my fridge. Oh my God. Cut them up into pieces, deep fry them, put some salt on them, and eat that with your queso. That will change your life. Flour crunchies, flour tortilla crunchies are like the best. Yum. Yes, 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 yes. I know what we may be having for dinner. (laughs) That's right. I need to call and edit my Instacart order. (laughs) <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> throw some velveta and yes some hotel yes in uh-huh dinner is served and throw some chorizo in there too yeah i think i did order order soy riso not quite as delicious soy riso yeah it's like you know like i know what you're healthy. saying i know what you're saying air quotes around healthy <laughs> yeah, right. exactly well okay you've redeemed yourself on the queso 
Thank you. I guess I'll continue to watch watch you on Runway Remake now. Yes, now. please, please continue to uh, to watch Runway Remake on Blueprint without the e. Myblueprint.com without an e in the blue. Exactly, and I will link to all of that good stuff and all of your gloriousness in the show notes. All right. I hope to talk to you soon. It was fun. Yes. Thank you so much, Mondo. I appreciate it. All right. Have a good day. If Mondo is half as delightful in person as he is over the phone, on TV, and via Blueprint, I want him to be my new best friend. Mondo, if you're listening, I'll wear your face, Keeney, to any PTA meeting any day of the week. Guys, please go follow Mondo on Instagram at Mondo Guerra. Runway Remake is available via Blueprint, which is myblueprint.com. Don't forget, there's no E in Blueprint. I can't wait to see that episode with Mondo and his mom. Aww. Also, check out Runway Remake contestant and Blueprint instructor Ellie Lum of Clumhouse in her interview on the Creative Queso website. I'll have the show notes for this episode with links to everything so you can find out when Dining Out for Life is happening in your city, how to get signed up for Blueprint, and links to all those fabulous ladies wearing Mondo Guerra Couture. Please be sure to hit the archives for interviews with other creative Brooklyn residents like Andrew and Dennis from the Crafty Lumberjacks and Ed Roth from Stencil One to find out where in Brooklyn they get their queso. Thank you to my guest, Mondo Guerra. Thank you to my producer, Mariah Gossett, and to my husband, Chris Beck, for the fabulous music. And most importantly, thank you to you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to leave a comment, subscribe, or hit that ratings button in iTunes. And I will talk to you guys next week.